Hey guys, I'm just going to be running you through some of the features of Quantum GIS 1.7.4. Uh, a few things have changed since some of the previous tutorials were recorded on uh, version 1.4 and 1.5. So uh, we'll just be taking a look at how to take a bunch of data sets and turn them into a uh, map for production or for print, uh, in any case for public consumption. So to start with, I've loaded in all the data from the uh, assignment 5 demo data set for uh, Rutland Town. You can see utility lines, substations, E911 points, these are basically all the addresses in the town, uh, roads and the town boundary. Uh, we'll start from the bottom up. We'll just give the town boundary sort of a more of a subtle background color and then make the outline something you'd expect from a uh, border feature something administrative like this. Uh, roads will also make those gray but just maybe a little bit uh, a little bit darker than the town background. Then the E911 points are kind of the, the big issue here. Uh, they're very blobby and all over the place so just gonna give them a simple square symbol and then reduce the symbol size by a lot so that it just gives a general sense of where the settlement patterns are. Uh, the substations will give those a custom icon. There's nothing, there's a lot to choose from, but there's nothing that really suggests a substation per se, so we'll just choose something sort of generic. Uh, bump up the size a bit, and then move it to the top so that it appears above all the other layers. Uh, you do that just by clicking and dragging around here in the table of contents. Uh, then finally we'll change the utility lines to be a little bit bolder. Just something that stands out against the background. And this is uh, more or less ready to show to the public. So, uh, the next step is going to be to, so we'll open the print composer, uh, which is just up here under file, uh, new print composer. We'll just move it into our viewport here. Um, so there are a couple of things to keep in mind here. Um, the print composer is just showing you a view of the data that you've arranged and symbolized here, uh, but also it'll allow you to add a bunch of annotations. Like in this case, there's a you know we can add labels, photos, a legend, a scale bar, and we'll go through a bunch of these things in this tutorial. So the first thing we need to consider is actually back in our project settings. Um, as you're going through some of the readings and getting through the the principles of GIS. Uh, there's some discussion of projections and what they mean to the map on the page. Um, as you can see, we are currently in a projection um, or just a, a geographic reference system that's called um, WGS84. This is a, a standard geographic reference system that uses latitude and longitude to uh, determine position. Within that, uh, we've got sort of a, a square looking Rutland Town, it's actually stretched out from how you might see it on one of the local projections. Um, for purposes of creating a printed map with a legend, we're going to want to display our units as meters, and WGS84 doesn't express its units as uh, meters, it expresses them as decimal degrees, which is something that's very hard for somebody who's looking at your map to understand. Um, it's much easier for them to see uh, 2,000 meters and to understand that as a, a distance in space rather than uh, 0.1 degrees and to have a, a sense of what that means spatially. So we actually have to change the project's projection before we even start composing the map. We'll do that by going to settings project properties, uh, and up here go to coordinate reference system. Oops, sorry. Up here we'll go to the coordinate reference system, and you can see that uh, at the moment it's specified as WGS84. Um, 
each of you, you're located in the U.S. Uh, within the U.S., there's a system called uh, the state plane datum, um, which sort of aligns a map fairly optimally for any place within the country. Uh, the way you find it is by looking for the name of your state, wherever you happen to be. Uh, so here, change it to search for name, and then this data happens to be in Vermont, so we'll look for Vermont and hit find. And you can see here we're under the uh, North American Datum 1983 system. Um, there are a bunch of these here, but the, the best way to keep in mind what you're looking for is uh, to keep it simple. You're looking for just straight up NAT83, not NAT83 CSRS, not NAT83 HARN. Uh, just scroll up and you'll see NAT83 Vermont. Select that, hit OK. And because it just re-projected re, uh, the data to fit that, you'll need to find the data again. You do that by right-clicking on any of your layers and then hit Zoom to Layer Extent. And here we are. You can see it's changed the, the stretch and the look of the data, uh, but this is much more like the proportions on the ground. And you can also see that uh, our scale bar here is something that's much more intelligible to the average user. Four kilometers this distance rather than uh, 0.1 or 0 0.05 decimal degrees. So let's go back to our print composer. Uh, and since you can see that the, the data is fairly vertical, um, it was square before, uh, but now the town is sort of laid out up and down, uh, it's probably going to be best for us to change the orientation of our page to something portrait, and then um, just zoom in on it so we have the full sense of our map document. This is now a standard size sheet uh, oriented vertically. Um, so the way that we get our map onto this sheet is we choose this here, which is the Add New Map feature, click on it, and then you actually have to click and drag where you want this map to appear on the page. So I want the map to take up most of the page, so I'll drag it that far out. So our data, as it's symbolized, is now in the map. Um, it's not necessarily uh, in the right place, so we're going to go to this uh, move item content feature. Uh, you can use it to pan the data around here as though you're in the, the Quantum GIS main window. So we'll just drag that to the center, uh, zoom in one, and then position the data so that we can see most of it within the map composition. And now that the data is filling the frame, we can add a few useful side items, like uh, let's add a title. You can choose this uh, add a tag function here. Uh, you can see it sort of sent in some default text, Quantum GIS. The way you edit any individual component of your map composition is over here. Go to the item tab along the side, and the currently selected map composition item will be available for changes. So let's change the text from Quantum GIS to the uh, Rutland Town and City Electric Grid. Uh, I want to change the font. Um, one of the fonts that I, I tend to find very useful for uh, cartography in general uh, is Palatino Linotype. Um, some of the other ones that you'd find useful are Open Sans. Um, Garamond is very useful. Um, I mean, a lot of this is is a, a fairly subjective pursuit, but um, tend, I tend to change up the defaults just because they, for whatever reason, uh, don't look exactly like what I'm hoping for. So increase the font size a little bit, and then stretch this out so that it's visible. And there is our title positioned top left so that it's the first thing uh, after noticing the entire map that the user usually goes to. Uh, the next item to add will be uh, a legend. And we'll just select the legend feature and then 
click about where we want it to go and it automatically populates it with the symbology of the map. Um, again, you can see that the default fonts aren't exactly what I'm aiming for here, so I will change that up a little bit. And the legend is, you can see it's obscuring a little bit of the map, but it's not obscuring the primary data that we're interested in. Uh, which is the electric grid and the, the sense of how it's delivering the power to dwellings in the area. Uh, then just to complete the composition, um, we can add a scale bar. And now that we've set this projection to be uh, NAT83 uh, Vermont units, it's in meters rather than decimal degrees. And in this case, the defaults are uh, 1,000 meters, uh, two segments. That tends to be a pretty, uh, a pretty good intuitive way of explaining scale and distance to your users. So we'll just leave the defaults in that case. Now, uh, in a lot of maps built from a GIS perspective, you'll see a, a north arrow included. Um, this has, you know, this is a long-standing cartographic practice, dates back thousands of years. Um, However, I actually find it, it tends to clutter up a modern map, uh, particularly in most circumstances the user is expecting north to be up. Uh, if for some reason that's not the case, if I rotated the map to better fit the shape of the data, uh, then I always include a north arrow for reference. But uh, for these purposes, I'm going to leave off a north arrow. If for some reason you'd like to include it, um, the way to do that, as well as including other annotations of that sort of symbology, is to go to this picture tool, select it, drop in a picture, maybe move that to where we want it, uh, and then in the item details for this, you can see there's our full point symbology available to us. Uh, and down there you can see that one of the options is, well, a, a number of the options are a series of north arrows. So if you wanted to include a north arrow, you would go about it that way. Uh, also, if you'd like to mark up the map in its final stage, at a pretzel, for instance, uh, you would do it this way. Uh, but for this case, I'm just going to delete that. So the final step is to export this map into a format that is uh, portable, you know, something you can email around, something you can print. Oh, but uh, before we do that, one important thing I left out is to uh, always include the units of the scale bar. So we'll just select that again. You can see the full menu comes up, and down here at the bottom we've got unit label. Type in meters, and it appears on the map. So let's export this to a uh, PDF, which is pretty much the common format that you're going to be uh, using for a print map. Pretty basic. You can see that we've you can see that we've already specified the uh, the general layout and options for the map. Um, so the quality 300 DPI is pretty good. That's going to produce a fairly big file size, um, but uh, it's going to be a very you know a fairly high quality image. So once we hit that print to PDF option, it just gives us a download. I will type in just a generic name, hit save. I'll save it somewhere that I actually can save. And then that'll take a little bit, but uh, it will produce a PDF map that I can then uh, upload as an assignment or uh, share with colleagues, clients, uh, whatever is necessary. Some of the other options available here are um, exporting as an image, which uh, you can use any of the standard image types. Uh, export as SVG, which if you want to edit this in a graphics program like uh, Inkscape or Adobe Illustrator, uh, that's the way to go. 
uh, and you can also print it directly. Now, one other option you can see is the, the save button here, uh, but that's not to save the document as you expect it. Um, this is actually to save the document as a template for uh, if you wanted to reuse this layout where you've got a title here, a legend here, and a scale bar here with other types of data. You don't actually need to save the print composer at all uh, as long as you have your main project in Quantum GIS saved. Uh, you can see that your print composer is always going to be available uh, via the menu up here. Go to File, Print Composers. You can see Composer 1 is the one that we've been working with. So we just make sure that the project itself is saved and your Print Composer is saved right along with it uh, in the layout that you've just created. Uh, as always, if you have any questions on this, just uh, shoot me an email, hit me up on Skype, uh, ask in the virtual cafe. But uh, yeah, happy mapping.